Unbelievable stuff. Now, that surely has got to be as wild as it gets. Bah! My dream is to fly, to fly through the sky, not just to fall, but to actually fly. And maybe even one day, maybe, we could actually land without a parachute. Let's see what the laws of physics have to say about that. Now, if we're going to demonstrate the physics of falling, first, we need someone who's prepared to fall. Second, we need some very technical people who are going to... What are you going to do? Are they going to make some measurements? And thirdly, we need a stopwatch, which is in the camera. I said, first, we need someone who's prepared to fall. But... I see. That's me. Now, this is a deadly serious science experiment. We're not here to have fun. Let's see how fast we can go. several markers on the crane. They're at 10 metre intervals all the way up the crane so we can help us gauge exactly how low Adrian comes with his jump and how much he returns to. On top of which, we've actually worked out on a calculator exactly, bearing in mind his weight and the stretch of the rope, the same thing, how much he stretches to and how much he returns to. On the first descent, Adrian takes 4.4 seconds to fall 63 metres. On the second descent, he takes 4.7 seconds to fall 40 metres. And finally, on the third descent, he takes 4.3 seconds to fall 35 metres. Using the formula speed equals distance over time, his average speed on the first descent is 14.3 metres per second. The average speed on the second descent is 8.5 metres per second. Finally, his average speed on the third descent is 8.1 metres per second. So Adrian's average speed depends on the height of his fall. As he falls, he starts to accelerate. So the shorter his fall, the less his top speed. The calculated speed for each descent is the average of his initial speed, which is zero at the start of the jump, and his top speed. This decreases with each descent. So the first conclusion is, the higher you jump from, the higher your top speed's going to be, which means I can jump from here without a parachute. It's not very fast, though, is it? Now, if we want to jump off something very, very high, something extremely tall and live, we have to find a way to slow ourselves down. So this time, I'm going to jump like a base jumper, like a, like a flying squirrel. We're in this big suit. I'm going to try and catch all the air I can. Ready, steady, go! By wearing his suit and jumping like a flying squirrel, Adrian is increasing the air resistance on his body. Air resistance depends on shape. As I was coming off the top, I didn't get the rush of air coming past me quite as much. It felt much slower. Let's see what our technical experts think of that. On the first descent, Adrian takes five seconds to fall 63 metres. On the second descent, he takes 4.8 seconds to fall 35 metres. And finally, on the third descent, he takes 4.2 seconds to fall 30 metres. Again, using speed equals distance over time, his average speed on the first descent is 12.6 metres per second. His average speed on the second descent is 7.3 metres per second. And finally, his average speed on the third descent is 7.1 metres per second. So, his squirrel jump is slower than his normal first jump. 
The average speed on his normal jump was 14.3 meters per second. The average speed for his squirrel jump is only 12.6 meters per second. Right. Upside down, do it upside down. Now, the second conclusion is that I can slow myself down while I'm falling by changing the shape of my body. So how fast can we go? When we skydive from an aeroplane at about four, four and a half thousand meters, we accelerate and we accelerate and we accelerate. But do we continue to just go faster and faster? There's a speed you reach and you just can go no faster. That's terminal velocity. For a skydiver flying flat like this on his belly, that's about 120 something miles an hour. But we want to go faster than that. If we can clean up the shape, if we can make ourselves more aerodynamic, like a big flying wing, like a sort of a human jet fighter, we can go faster. We can go faster than 200 miles an hour. We can go faster than 300 miles an hour. We can average 340 miles an hour just from four and a half thousand meters. That's my terminal velocity. It's time to play space ball. The ball accelerates until it reaches its terminal or maximum velocity. But Adrian soon catches up with it, meaning that his terminal velocity is faster. But that's not the end of the story. The only way to play space ball is by being able to alter your terminal velocity. Sometimes Adrian and his friends fall faster than the ball, and sometimes they fall slower. The ball can't change its terminal velocity because it can't change shape, but humans can change their terminal velocity by changing their body shape. A leg bend, or an outstretched arm, can increase or decrease the air resistance on the body. This allows them to fall slower or faster than the ball. But terminal velocities well in excess of 100 miles per hour are definitely too fast for a safe landing. So, until Adrian perfects the art of flying, he will have to rely on his parachute to slow him down. Parachutes dramatically increase air resistance, creating a big upward force to slow him down for a safe landing. <laughs> <laughs> 